This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the perfect place to create a professional website for creators constantly on the go. In this series so far, we've covered it all. Abandoned cameras that were incredible and brilliant, yet did too much, and ones that we could legitimately question if they were a scam. But none come close to the sci-fi glimpse of the future that the Lytro Cinema Camera offered at NAB in 2016. The capabilities of this massive camera were staggering, capable of shooting at 755 raw megapixel 40K resolution up to 300 frames per second, but that's not even the most interesting aspect of this camera. It's a light field camera, and capable of changing the depth of field, focus position, shutter speed, or dynamic range in post. But why did Lytro fail with such an incredible camera, and what makes this technology still almost science fiction even today? Find out today on our Abandoned Camera Series. We've made more progress on our abandoned cameras website thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace. We've been compiling all of the information we've gathered on each of these cameras and are putting it all in one place. Thanks to Squarespace's easy to customize site with embed and custom coding options, we will be adding a forum onto the website for everyone to talk about these abandoned cameras and share your stories about them. Squarespace makes it super easy to host our research videos and allows us to connect you to soon to be abandoned camera merch as well. Be sure to check out the link in the description below to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash framevoyager to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code framevoyager. Now back to some abandoned cameras. Lytro was founded by Ren Ung in 2006, originally called Refocus Imaging. Ren was a recent graduate of Stanford and had completed his PhD studies in digital light field photography, working on miniaturizing light field technology. But to tell us about these transformations, let's welcome Dr. Ren Ung. Welcome. Andrew, thank you. Great to be here. Ren is the president and CEO of Refocus Imaging. Tell us a little bit about this new company you have. Well, Refocus Imaging, what we're working on is light field photography. Light fields are the next transformation in digital photography. Cool. So here is a picture that Michael just took. Uh, what you can see is that it's focused on the girl in the middle here, and uh, the model in the foreground and the background are out of focus. They're out of the depth of field. And what we can get is that we can uh, refocus the picture after we've taken it onto the girl in the foreground or all the way onto the girl in the background. Refocus Imaging would launch as Lytro in 2011, coming out of the shroud of secrecy they had been in since their founding and would go on to release the world's first consumer light field camera. And I feel we need to take a pause here on the history of Lytro leading up to the cinema camera, because to understand a lot of what comes next, we need to first understand what light field cameras are. Normal cameras work very similarly to how our eyes do. Focus in on what you want to capture and you get to take a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional space with only a part of that three-dimensional space being out of focus. But light fields capture every ray of light, every photon essentially, in frame. These rays of light are called a planoptic function, which is a five-dimensional function representing the intensity or chromacity of light observed from every position and direction in a three-dimensional space. Light field cameras do just this, capturing the five-dimensional information from the light field in the image, including both the light's intensity and direction of the rays of light. Light field cameras use several different sensors in the camera to capture all this information, including the intensity, color, and direction of the light, allowing them to mathematically calculate the starting point of each ray of light before it was captured by the sensor. All of this information allows the camera to capture a three-dimensional image, allowing for several crazy applications in post-production, including custom focal points, meaning you can change the focus point of the image in post because of all the information that has been captured. Also, you can change the depth of field in post as well, essentially changing the image with the narrowest focus achievable and also bringing the image to infinite depth of field so everything is completely in focus. There are a lot more crazy features to light field cameras and we'll continue to talk about them even more later on in the Lytro Cinema Camera. So stick around. Despite having a somewhat space age vibe to the technology, the concepts of light fields were actually talked about by Leonardo da Vinci in 1530. He talked about vision and perspective and described distribution of light rays in space, calling them pyramids of light. These light pyramids fill space, but the information changes from each angle you look at it. This idea was coined light field in a scientific publication by Andre Gershon in 1930. 
1936 and would continue to be a very experimental camera, not available into the public until Lytro would release the first commercially available light field camera. The Lytro light field camera in 2011 for $399. This is the, uh, the Lytro and uh, as you can see it's completely uh, no frills. This is all the stock for the lens right here. And I'm actually, I'm going to take a picture right now. Uh, obviously you saw the video uh, and I can refocus after I take this, but I'm going to put the book close. Josh is in the background. Took and now energy. it processes yeah. the photo and then I can tap to refocus. All right, are you going to let me do this? It's working. It's working so well. <laughs> All right. Lytro would go on to release several more cameras and accessories over the next few years, adding more features into the camera like perspective shift, parallax, and even putting in an app for the camera on the iPhone in 2013. In 2014, Lytro would release the Lytro Elam, a professional grade light field camera with 40 mega ray light field sensor, fixed lens, four inch touchscreen, removable battery, and an SD card slot. This camera would cost around $1,600, continuing to improve the cameras for the consumer market. But as they received hundreds of millions of dollars from investors, Lytro set their sights on other goals beyond the consumer market, shifting the entire company to video and virtual reality in 2015 with the Lytro Emerge, a 360 degree VR capturing solution that offered six degrees of freedom volume recording. As users move in the six degree of freedom experience, then we redo that computation at a kind of theoretical or conceptual level and that's how we deliver an experience that's truly immersive. It was the first light field camera for VR, and it looked like a very promising option. During these years of development, Ren Ung would step down from his CEO role, becoming the executive chairman at Lytro, and Jason Rosenthal would become the CEO of Lytro, turning the company strategy around 180 degrees, going from just still photography to a more video approach, resulting in Lytro at NAB in 2016 releasing the craziest cinema camera ever, the Lytro Cinema Camera. So what you're looking at here, this is Lytro Cinema. This is the first generation of something that we do believe is a historic moment for cinema. This is 10 years in the works. Lytro has been working towards a vision and we believe that this is that next step towards achieving that vision. From that, it is 755 raw megapixels of light ray capture. And that is able to be captured and streamed at 300 frames per second. That is something that we've worked very hard on in order to make sure that we can achieve everything and anything in between to meet, if not exceed, industry standard requirements. Unfortunately, we were not able to track down the full short film life that they released and showcased for NAB, but we managed to find clips here and there, and we will show that throughout the rest of this episode. All of Lytro's official videos have mostly been removed at this point, but the booth at NAB in 2016 was incredibly popular for Lytro, more so than they had expected, causing them to have to set maximum occupancy for the booth due to fire safety concerns. This camera was, as Lytro described it, the world's first light field solution for film and television television, featuring a previously mentioned and insane 755 megapixels of raw 40K resolution. When you capture in the high bandwidth mode of Lytra Cinema, it gives you the ability to then reconstruct any shutter angle and any frame rate. So this allows you to use motion blur as a creative tool rather than something that's baked in at the time of capture all available for $125,000 subscription price that could be more based on how many days of use and the information and data storage required. This was not available for purchase, but for rent based on how expensive it would be to produce this camera, making it virtually unthinkable to even purchase one for production. Sensor size, obviously it's a, it's, that's a traditional thing where people think about Super 35 and right, right. what's the, the lighter approach there? So we are a super, 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 super 35. Uh, it is a very non-standard optical format. The first generation of the technology, the image sensor is quite literally larger than a half of a meter wide. So we have very different optics. We have very different methodologies in order to collect that much light. But you have the real world points. They go through a main lens and that is the lens that you'll see in front of the actual Lytra Cinema camera. Some even thought that this camera could be invaluable in the visual effects field with demonstrations being given on how it could automate rotoscoping. 
With the light field, you're actually able to generate an automated 3D camera track of the world, and it provides you with sub-pixel accuracy of that virtual position. So what you're looking at here is the original plate that was captured, and we like to show this because it is quite literally one of the worst things that you could ever do for your scene. So what they wanted to do with the scene is take the element from the confetti and place it on top of the better performance on the non-confetti take. And then because you have the camera as it was tracked in time and space, you can reproject both into the, the real world so that they are locked into the actual coordinate that they were captured. If you didn't have that, you would have two completely different motions that would not actually composite well at all. And this is how the final composite looks when you place everything back together. But the camera was massive at around six feet long and more than likely hundreds of pounds in weight, making it fairly difficult to actually work with. And the fact that to capture all of this, it took 400 gigabytes a second, it made it virtually impossible to use in a practical setting. So much so that many wondered if maybe Lytra made a mistake in making the camera specs so far beyond anything available at the time? What if they had just made a 4K camera with this technology or even something smaller? This is a trap we've seen several other companies time and again fall into when creating a digital cinema camera for the first time. They go too big and try to do too much, resulting in a camera that is too complicated. And we could think of the Penelope Delta as another example of a groundbreaking, just beautiful cinema camera that might have survived if it didn't push the boundaries in too many ways, making it easier for multiple issues and higher manufacturing costs that would sink the company. But back to Lytro. After their success at NAB in 2016, Lytro would go on to release an updated VR camera in 2017 and acquired a VR animation company, Limitless. But despite all of this investment, it would all come to a breaking point for Lytro in 2018 when the VR industry that they had placed their bet on as a company hit a downturn and companies sought cheaper alternatives to the Lytro cameras. They would announce on March 27th that it would stop taking on new productions and providing professional services and start winding down, thanking everyone who had supported them over the years. It would later be reported that Lytro was being sold to Google for between $25 and $40 million, which is actually pretty low considering they've received over $210 million of funding over the years. It'll be hard to tell exactly what Google is planning on using the technology for in the future, as there have not been many reports on what has happened with the tech after the sale. But many Lytro employees would go on to work for Google, and others still would go on to form a new company called Lightfields Lab, where they continue this day to develop Lightfield technology. So despite the death of Lytro and their cinema camera, the technology that was beyond ahead of its time still lives on in other projects and somewhat influenced a lot of virtual productions that are becoming popular today. But over 15 years before this camera was invented, the world's first 4K digital cinema camera was about to launch, and the history of this camera has all but been wiped clean from the internet. But we had some exclusive anonymous sources come forward to tell us the untold story of the abandoned Dalsa Origin 4K camera. So be sure to check out that video now.